So let's just keep throwing the bone walkers at him. Come on. Oh, they are living way longer. He is he is hurting. Gaynor is now wet noodling our freaking bone walkers. They're actually timing out now. He's not even killing them. Ladies and gentlemen, every Morrowind player knows that 95% of a build's power comes from the name. And Jubs heard a lot of them from us. Things that are themed, things that are punny, things that are just outright outrageous and dumb. And, well, today is no exception. Because when we're talking about making our battle mage character, we need something that equally invests us in the build. And when thinking about a heavily armored sorcerer, someone who's going to lead a massive military force of conjured enemies into battle along with them, blocking things with a shield and shooting lightning bolts out of their fairy fingertips, well, that sure sounds a lot like Panikin. I know I'm not talking about that failed Jedi beach hater over there, okay? No one cares about that guy. That's old news. No, this is referring to the most powerful, most heavily armored space sorcerer in the galaxy. This is the true name of Dark Helmet, Master of the Schwartz, an intergalactic terror. And by the time you're done with this build, well, you're Schwartz will be as big as mine. Now, when we're talking about a heavily armored Magicka user or a battle mage character, well, there are two standout choices that I want to talk to. Now, the first one everybody probably saw coming and is actually the first time I've recommended this as the main class for a build. So we got a fresh grind over here at Coffee Nut Gaming. And ladies and gentlemen, I am talking about the Breton. Oh yes, the butt of every joke about Elder Scrolls races, but not today, because today the Breton is truly in their element. And let's talk about why by first looking at their skill bonuses. You can see the Breton has a plus five to alchemy, plus five to alteration, plus ten to conjuration, Perfect for a battle mage character starting out with all those summons that we're going to want to have. We have a plus five to illusion, 10 to mysticism, and 10 to restoration. So all around an incredible Magicka user just from their skill bonuses alone. But that's not all. Let's go ahead and move down to their specials and take a look at their Magicka bonus. And you can see Fortify Maximum Magicka 0.5x their intelligence. So much like the High Elf, we do have an innate boost to our magical pool here as a Breton. Additionally, playing into that more heavily armored tank style, you can see they have a 50% resist to Magicka. So not only will we be shielded from swords and clubs and spears with our heavy plate armor, but also from spells with the innate magic that bristles under a Breton skin. I I don't know how they get this, but hey, we'll certainly take it. And moving down, you see they also have Dragon Skin, which is a shield, 50 points for 60 seconds on self. A nice way to boost our armor class by 50 points, kind of get us out of those tight situations when somebody's gotten up in our grill and we're all out of magic. Now, another thing that makes Bretons incredible for battle mages is that they start with a 40 to strength if you pick a male Breton, as well as a 50 to endurance and 50 to willpower. So not only will you be dealing some damage with your melee weapons here at the start, you'll also have a very high spell cast chance and a high magical pool. So all around, if you're making a battle mage kind of conjuration style character, Breton's really a no brainer, definitely the standout here. But if you are someone who wants to lean a little bit more on the battle and a little less on the mage, the second race that I can recommend for this is actually another one that we don't talk a ton about on this channel, and that is going to be the orc. So as you can see, the orc on their skill bonuses, we have a 10 to armorer, five to ax, 10 to block, 10 to heavy armor, again, leaning more into that battle versus the mage side of this build. But much like the Breton you see here, we do have a resist magicka of 25% along with a berserk ability, which is gonna fortify our health 20 points for 60 seconds, our fatigue 200 points for 60 seconds, our attack 100 points for 60 seconds, very cool ability, and closing out with a drain attribute agility of 100 points. This is honestly kind of like a baby adrenaline rush here. The only drawback, the only thing that makes adrenaline rush a little bit better is that because adrenaline rush boosts attributes, hard attributes, it has a couple other externalities outside of just increasing your hit chance and doesn't burn your agility down to zero, which is gonna make you very prone to being knocked over in combat. But all in all, 
not too bad. And the thing that makes the orc an obvious choice over something like the Red Guard for this kind of build is that under the hood, our orc has a 50 willpower at the start, along with 45 strength for both sexes. So the orc, not something you would typically think of when thinking of a spellcasting character, but when you have a 50 willpower to start the game, that's really going to raise your spell success chance and is actually going to put them into a great position to be a battle mage character. Now, with that being said, for the sake of this video, I am going to select our Breton character. I'm going to get rid of the classic Friar Tuck haircut. I'm going to move this over, clear it off like the field of battle, cutting it clean like an enemy's neck because, well, we're doing a battle mage here. And then I will click OK and we'll move into our custom class creation. Now, before we break down my version of the Morrowind Battle Mage, this is another one of those instances where the Morrowind class that comes built in with the game is actually a great option. So if you're just trying to go straight into the game, you just want to click the name Battle Mage and be off the races, feel free to go ahead and do that. I think it's set up pretty nicely. But I am going to do something a little bit different here, something that is going to align with the video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into it. And the first thing we're going to do here is select our specialization as magic. Of course, as you can see here, going to get an innate boost to all of our magical abilities here with some of the important things for this build going to be destruction, conjuration, enchant, etc. After selecting our specialization, the next thing we're going to do is actually leave our favorite attribute as strength. Again, we're going battle mage so we got to be good at the battle and we got to be good at being a mage and the thing that's going to make us the best battler is going to be having that high strength dealing a lot of melee damage and having a really big health pool now i will switch out our second favorite attribute from agility to intelligence because as you can see here the intelligence is going to determine our maximum amount of magicka now moving on to our major skills for our first major skill i am going to pick destruction so destruction pretty self-explanatory here this is going to be all of our drain and damage spell effects as well as our elemental damages that we all know and love things like fire shock poison all that good stuff comes out of the destruction tree and we're going to want to sling some spells as much as we want to cleave people in twain so of course taking destruction here second i am going to take blunt weapon now this is going to be our main weapon skill why I don't really know. I guess for some reason I just associate battle mages with having like maces and, and war hammers and stuff. I guess it's because a battle mage and a paladin are like really close together and paladins usually have war hammers and blunt weapons and all that fun stuff to, you know, crush the skulls of heretics as one obviously does. I mean, come on. But also we will be getting a great blunt weapon a little bit later on here in the playthrough. So of course, fitting the build to the build. After blunt weapon, I will be taking heavy armor, of course, sticking with the battle mage theme. And also this is going to be very, very helpful because heavy armor, speaking Daedric specifically, is going to have the highest amount of enchantment points so that in the late game, we can stick a bunch of summon spells on all of our armor pieces and not have to burn our magicka when summoning our armies. And speaking of summoning our armies, well, after heavy armor, I will be taking conjuration here, pretty straightforward. And finally, I will be taking mysticism because we are going to want to use drain health to restore ourselves because i'm a freaking heavily armored battle mage i'm not worried about carrying around restoration magic now that's for those pansy wizards that like to sit up in their towers you know fly around on broomsticks and, and shoot down no i want to get blood on my face and physically harm someone with my healing and that is only possible with the spell absorb health and of course all the other absorb spells are great too so totally on theme and very practical for this build now moving on from our major skills to our minor skills as i say in every how-to video morrowind is incredibly flexible so make this character your own pick whatever minor skills you want that you will see yourself using this is simply my recommendation my take on a battle mage style character but with our disclaimers out of the way for the first skill i am going to take block after block i will be taking enchant for a lot of the reasons i've already said here in the video, next, I'll be taking Axe as a solid backup weapon from the Blunt Weapon. Next, I'll be taking Alteration. And finally, to close out the build, I will be taking Athletics. So there you go, a final look here at our major and minor skills for our Battle Mage character. And now, we'll move on 
to our birth sign selection. Now for our birth sign, there is one clear standout choice, and that is going to be the Atronach. Now the Atronach, of course, gives us the ability Womb Burn, which is a spell absorption, 50 points, constant effect, fortify Magicka two times right off the bat. Again, pairing that with being a Breton, having a ridiculously high intelligence at the beginning of the game, just gonna give you a massive Magicka pool. You will not be limited by your spell points early or late in the game with this particular birth sign. Now finally, here it does give us that stunted Magicka effect, which means you will not regenerate Magicka innately by resting. You will have to carry around some Magicka potions to keep topped up or absorb spells from other spellcasters or something like your Ancestral Ghost Summon, which is actually a great workaround for this character because you are going to have that spell anyways. So whenever you find yourself low on Magicka and you're playing this build, just remember, summon that Ancestral Ghost, make sure to absorb some of their spells, boost up that Magicka pool, and you'll be back on the road in no time. Now, if you don't go the Atronach route, what I would recommend is probably the Mage route, which is another Fortify Maximum Magicka sign, but unlike the Apprentice, it does not have a weakness to Magicka on top of it. So this does keep you nice and tanky and does improve your Magicka pool. So it kind of sticks to both sides of the build, and just why I would personally take it over the apprentice. I'm a flavor guy. I like to build my characters with a theme that I then role play and stick to, which is incredibly obvious if you ever watch any of my Let's Play series. Uh, you can check out the second channel if that's something you're interested in. Link will be down below in the description, but I don't know. I love making new characters that make me play in fresh new ways. And that way today is going to be an Atronach Battle Mage. So let's click OK and take a look at what we've ended up with. So here we have Panikin, a Breton battle mage born under the sign of the Atronach. We're gonna have a starting health of 40 points, a magic pool of 210 right off the bat with a strength of 50, an intelligence of 60, and a willpower of 50. And I hope seeing that gets you as excited about this build as I am, which if you saw the play tests of this over on Twitch, well, then you know that I, I'm a big fan of this build. And we're about to go get some items that will make it plainly clear why this is such a rewarding playstyle. Let's get into Vardenfell. Oh, hello, Celis Gravius. It's so good to see you again. Don't mind my Breton heritage here. I know that that's not something he typically sees from me, but we'll make an exception for how to battle mage. I, I do enjoy this build a lot. Now, as we make our way over to Aurel's trade house, we did give the ring to Fargoth to boost the old disposition over here. We'll also rest to get our fatigue up as well. And then we'll go ahead and barter, like I said. We'll sell everything to him because money is very important. Whenever you're making a mage character, that has to buy a lot of spells in the early game. But we won't just be selling to a real. We'll also be buying. So let me grab one iron warhammer. And then we will also grab a steel left pauldron as well as steel greaves to give us some early heavy armor. And we will be completing the set here in just a minute to get our, our berserker off to a good start. So let me go ahead and offer. Let's slip on the new duds. And you can see here, we're already off to a pretty rip-roaring start. All right, we got we got friggin' Jason Statham here, ready to kick some ass with the Iron Warhammer and his, I don't, mis mismatched armor. <laughs> but like I just alluded to, we're gonna need some armor here to get started off. Get that heavy armor bumping, that armor class up in the air. So first, we're gonna travel to Vivek. And then once we are in Vivek, we're actually gonna make our way down to the boat over here. I know we're not going to Balmora first. This, this, this sacrilege on the channel, you better watch this video quick because it's coming down in 24 hours. My, my Balmora overlords are gonna, I'm gonna be banned, all right? I'm gonna be banned, but just stick with me here. I know it's culture shock, but I promise it'll be worth it. So let's hop down to the dock. We'll talk to Anno and Durham, and then we'll hit travel and head over to Halawad. Now, once we are in the booming metropolis of Halawad, I mean, look at this. The pinnacle of progress. The star of the swamps. <laughs> but with that being said, we're actually going to head over to one of the ramshackle huts here at the back of the city. Uh, that is the city. Whoa, let me tell it back here. Town, the town of Halawad. And that shack is going to be Fat Legs Drop Off which is as good as the name sounds. Now, if you've never been in Fat Legs, well, walk inside, go ahead, turn over here to the left, 
and you'll notice a hatch beckoning you into what could only be something totally legal, right? Wrong. <laughs> this is a smuggler's hideout, right? This is somewhere where the Kamana Tong is trying to do some dirty business. And it's also some of the only relevant merchants that are actually in Hala Ode. So if you ever find yourself stuck here, come to Fat Legs and then, you know, talk to some of the people around here because they, they actually do have some decent trade goods, but we're not interested in them. We are interested in what lies beneath the river here. So let's go ahead, go for a swim, see if we get any slaughter fish. It's is Todd gracing us today? What is this? No slaughterfish. Whoa. Okay. Well, the game. The game is excited about the build today too. I guess it's gr it's granting us its mercy. I, I guess with the the miracles of the Elder Scrolls aside, let's hop over and start investigating these crates because believe it or not, if you're stealing from the smugglers, the law doesn't really care. So let's open the crate and inside you will find steel armor ripe for the taking. So let's go ahead throw on both our gauntlets here and look at that we even get a tower shield to go with that minor skill of block that we picked up that's going to be awesome we'll hop over to the second crate and boom the rest of the armor set and then some not a bad way to start off here at level one an entire set of steel armor with just a couple buys from a real i'll take that every time so let's go ahead throw on the boots throw on the cuirass throw on the helmet get the final pauldron on and then, like I said, just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we are already kitted out. Battle Mage ready to freaking rock. And then we even have a third crate over here, which has nothing in it. But we did get the armor, so... <laughs> Now, once you're finished looting the looters over at Fat Legs Drop-Off, you know, polishing off the freaking Myrtle Beach restaurant of La Huad, well, come back over here, speak to Baleni, and we'll be going over to the Mages Guild in Vivek to start buying some of our spells. Now that we have arrived at Vivek's four and quarter plaza, well, let's go ahead, like I mentioned, pop inside, and then we're gonna wanna dive into the Mages Guild over here, and we're going to want to do two things. Now, the first is join the Mages Guild, so let me do that real quick. Yes, sure, charters, yeah, charters, it sounds great. And then after that, we are going to wanna come down here and do a Dark Brotherhood exploit like we all know and love. So let me hop into this bed over here, do some sleeping real quick, because we are going to need as much money as we can get to buy all the spells that we need to, as is tradition when doing a mage character how-to video. Oh, here we go. Let's go ahead, start showing them what we're made of. You know what, let's be flavorful. Let's get the ghost in the mix here. We are a conjurer after all, let's start it going. Boom, boom, and oh my, God, look at that damage. Look at that, that is the freaking 50 strength with the iron warhammer. Oh my God, a two hit kill. Good job, Bonesy. Good freaking work. Okay, let's, let's grab all of his items here. Throw that in our inventory. And you know what, I'm actually gonna do it a second time just to be safe. Because again, spells are very expensive here at the beginning of the game. Like I said earlier, all this gold really does matter. Oh, and here we go, round two. Let's get our freaking hits down. One, two. Oh, we got a three shot him this time. Come on. Oh, but two felt so good. Okay, we'll take it. But here we go. We're loading up. And again, you don't have to do this, you know, exploit at level one. You can't just wait till a little bit later in your normal playthrough style. But we got to keep the videos nice and to the point here. So we're going to keep moving. And now that we have all of our armor that we'll be selling in just a second here, the second thing we want to do while we're in Vivac is actually come over here, open the wooden door, and then see good old elf friend Cyrilanwi. And believe it or not, Cyrilanwi, I'm, I'm actually not here for Elton Brand this time. Shocking. I know. Believe it or not, she is a spell merchant. Does anyone ever use her that way? Well, you let me know in the, down in the comments. I, I freaking only ever come here for Elton Brand, but like I said, we'll open the spells and hop down to Anducey's open door because shortly we will be turning this into a 100 point open spell that we'll be using to get an incredible item right at the start of the game. That's perfect for this build. Now, one thing I forgot to mention before we get too carried away is we actually do want to loot the Mages Guild supply chest over here, grabbing our... Magicka potions, our fortify willpower potions, and the scrolls, of course, because these will 
become very important as well. And be sure to grab the ones in Sadrath Mora as well, because these are crucial a little bit later on. Okay, so here we are. We have a full set of armor. We have an incredible character build under our freaking arms. And now we're going to go over to Caldera and solve that money problem. Now that we have a bunch of Dark Brotherhood pieces in our back pocket. So let's head down here. And on this bright, beautiful, sunny day, we're going to make our way over to Gorak Manor to see old Barnas. Yeah, that freaking rap scallion. Surprise Clavicus Vile let him off the leash. You know, he's quite the troublemaker. Always gets always gets caught up in a lot of mischief. But, you know, maybe that's why Clavicus keeps him around. I don't know. But here we are, Creeper. We're going to open the bar to menu. And then we're going to throw all that Dark Brotherhood armor that we just got right at his face. So there's 4,800 gold. Click offer. We'll go ahead, rest 24 hours for him to get that gold back. And we will then sell all this armor again. Even getting rid of some of that steel armor we had still lying around. And as you can see, that's another 3,500 gold in our pocket. So we are very well set up for a little spell shopping spree here in just a moment, which is absolutely fantastic because like I mentioned, all these summoning abilities, they are pretty expensive, not only to buy, but also in Magicka value. So I know we took enchantment at the beginning of this video as a minor skill. That is going to be something you're certainly going to want to leverage as this character grows. The ideal solution, the end game for this battle mage character is going to be having all your summons on enchanted items so that you're not destroying your magicka pool and can instead use those for spells once your people are out and about fighting with you. But with that out of the way, now we are going to speak to Amelia and Amelia is going to take us over to Sandrith Mora, where we are going to start amassing those conjuration spells like I mentioned. Once we've arrived in Sandrith Mora, let's go over to the back and speak to our good friend Eleni Haleran. And we'll open her barter menu here, and we are going to scroll down to what is easily the best early game summon spell, Summon Greater Bone Walker. Oh yes, you too can share the misery of getting stunted by a greater bone walker, stuck in place by that, that devil of the undead with all of your enemies. So let's go ahead, add that to the inventory. And then we also have the first of our Atronach spells here, which is going to be Summon Frost Atronach. And if you're feeling really spicy, you know, go ahead and add a Summon Skeletal Minion into the mix as well, because mention about conjuration now that we're in the spells portion of the video that you can only have one effect of the same type on one spell so if i'm going to make a conjuration spell that's going to summon multiple creatures well i have to have unique effects for each so for example a summon frost atronach summon greater bone walker and summon skeletal minion is a spell that can be made and that works but what i can't do is throw multiple summon greater bone walkers onto the same spell. Instead, I will have to make the same spell with different names or put it on different items, such as different pieces of my enchanted armor or weapons in order to get multiple of those same mobs out. So if I want multiple greater bone walkers, I'm gonna have to make someone greater bone walker one, someone greater bone walker two, and someone greater bone walker three and cast all of them in succession to get three greater bone walkers at the same time. Now, the second thing that we're going to grab while we're here in Wolverine Hall, like I mentioned earlier in the video, we're not interested in restoration magic, okay? We're battle mages. We're battling. We're not here to heal ourselves, okay? If we're healing, we're stealing the life force from others. So we're going to come down to the Imperial Shrine and speak to Anius Atreus, and then we are going to be grabbing our Absorb Health spell. Of course, Absorb Health, one of the strongest spells in the game. It does damage, it heals us, and it can't be reflected. Perfect for a Battle Mage character. So what we're going to do is now head back into the town because there's another awesome Conjuration Cellar just a little bit inside of Sadrath Mora. And as we walk, let's talk about Conjuration and some of the major mistakes that you can avoid when you are using this ability. Now, the first major mistake that you will want to avoid is actually building your conjuration composition the wrong way. Now, what do I mean by that? Conjuration, com this isn't League of Legends. This isn't a MOBA, you know? Come on, Coffee, you're over-optimizing. That's probably what you're thinking. But actually, there's some pretty big mistakes that you can avoid. Now, the first thing 
is going to be being conscious of the pairs of summons that you put together. What do I mean by this? Well, the first thing is pretty much all undead in Morrowind are weak to fire. So you don't want to spell make a spell that puts skeletons, for example, with a flame atronaut. Because when the flame atronaut casts its spells, it is, of course, an on-target flame spell. It will explode and it will kill all your skeletons and essentially just waste all the magicka you've just spent. So avoiding weaknesses so that you're not just burning magicka is actually something that you do want to keep an eye on when you're summoning multiple people at the same time. Now, the other thing, you know, not just avoiding weaknesses, but actually think about some synergies that you can have. Instead of summoning skeletons with fire atronachs, put them with a frost atronach because they're actually immune. Or put a bone walker with a daydroth because a bone walker is going to be able to have an innate resistance against its shock and poison damage. Now, this isn't something super critical. It won't break your time in Morrowind, but again, it will just waste all your magicka. And since we took the Atronach, well, we care about our magicka. We don't just want to be burning all our potions all day, and it's just, it's not fun to see everything blow up, and you're like, why did they die so easily? But with those tips out of the way, now here we are at our second destination in Sandrith Mora, which is Urtiso Fiaron, our sorcerer. So let's go ahead, open it up, and speak to Ortiso. Now what we're going to want to do with Ortiso is actually polish off some of our remaining conjuration skills. So let's hit spells, and if you want to, again, we did take Axe as one of our minor skills, so we can pick up the Bound Battle Axe here to help with leveling that. And then let's go ahead, scroll down, and you'll see that Ortiso has the remaining Atronox. We picked up the Frost and Wolverine Hall, but here you see we can get our Flame and our Storm Atronox. And before I click on this, look at the price on this guy. I mean, 1,283 gold. The, ladies and gentlemen, that is, that's why we needed to do the Dark Brotherhood exploit at the beginning. Summon spells are ridiculously expensive. And I get it. it it's because they're very strong. But wow, 1,200. That's, that's a lot of freaking change. You're going to be spending even more if you want to grab a Clan Fear and a Bone Lord as well, which again, I would recommend because if you're trying to stack summons into one spell, you need a lot of options because you can't double up. You can't have multiple bone walkers in one spell, multiple Atronachs of the same type in one spell, etc. But with those spells in our inventory, you know, you could come here and spell make and do, like I said, kind of your compositions, like I mentioned before, trying to pair around elemental weaknesses, just so you're not burning all your magicka up, summoning flame atronox that kill all your freaking skeletons but i'm actually not going to do that right now we're going to keep the video moving and ladies and gentlemen now we are entering the portion that we all know and love from our how-to series when things go from zero to freaking a hundred so if you're a new player don't want to see the end game loot go ahead click off now but if not well there was your warning and let's get crazy now the first thing about getting crazy with this while we actually head back into Wolverine Hall. It's not someone we will be seeing in this video, but something that you should definitely know about as you play your Battle Mage character beyond the end of this how-to guide, and that is going to be the Enchanter Felon Marion. Now, Felon Marion is a spell merchant that lives in the upper tower of Telbranora, and he definitely deserves a shout out because he is the only merchant in the entire game that sells Summon Winged Twilight and Summon Golden Safe spells. So if you're interested in the, you know, idiocy of max level enchanting, having repeatable golden saints to soul trap and throw into super overpowered items, well, then Felon is gonna be your best friend. He'll, he'll get you fucking sped up <laughs> and off to the races with those suckers right there. Now, the second thing that we're going to want to do is to head out to Telfir. And to those of you who may be newer, well, Telfir is all the way over here. And there's no fast travel way to get there, no easy way to do it. So with the magic of editing, I will catch up with you there short. Oh my God, leave me alone. No, no, we're so close. We're so close, leave me alone. Go, oh, just, just get on the beach. Just get on the beach. Now oh, there's two of them. Now oh, go, go, go. <laughs> Okay, okay, we made it. All right, we made it. <laughs> I love this game. I can't stand Slaughterfish, can't stand it. But now that we're here at Telfir, well, we're gonna pop inside and we're finally gonna make use of that open spell that we made back. 
in the deck. Now we didn't get a levitation spell yet, so the first thing we're actually gonna want to do is uh, we're actually gonna want to go, let's go ahead and get up in the upper chambers. And then we're gonna wanna steal the rising force potion that is sitting right over here. Let's go ahead and get that in the pockets. Oh, and look at that. I didn't even put two and two together. We also have a potion of invisibility. Uh, I, I guess this is probably to help with the corpusarium or to get away from stealing, although they don't really care if you steal. All right, with the rising force potion on, let's go ahead, fly on up to the top level. And then we're gonna want to turn and go over to Mr. Divaith himself, who is brooding over here as powerful wizards do. Okay. You know, I will say, as a battle mage, I, I respect the hustle. I like that this guy's in heavy armor. You know, we're practically kin, aren't we? <laughs> what we're gonna do now is pop our standard fortify willpower potions. And after popping all 10, we still only have a, well, a 29% chance to go after it. So maybe, you know, maybe pop a quick save before this one, but certainly doable. And then we're gonna pop this sucker open. Come on now. Oh, there we go, second try, look at that. And then we will hopefully absorb this trap. Yes, look at that, okay, okay. Vivek is, Vivek is on our side today. Look at that, double luck. And on top of that, we get an incredible item to pair with our wonderful armor. So let's open up the chest and you will see here Scourge with a chop 10 to 35, slash 10 to 35, thrust 6 to 8, a weight of 30, and a value of 80,000 gold. With a cast when used, summon Draymora for 30 seconds on self, and a summon scamp for 30 seconds on self. Perfectly fitting the build, the Conjurer play style. Again, it gives us two unique summons, so we can have, you know, two people already out before even casting any of our own spells, totally conserving our magicka, and just being an all-around badass weapon. So let's take a look at this item here, and there you go. I mean, come on, how much, how much more sick does it get than that? Look at that. Devaith Fear, he, he knows how to make them, right? He knows how to order them. That is a nasty looking mace right there. Nasty. So now that we have our armor, our weapon, and our spells handled, we are incredibly well set up to be a fantastic battle mage character. But you know how it is on this channel with these how-to videos. We, we don't just stop at 100. We go ahead and crank everything up to 110 and then show you exactly how broken things can be. So for this final item, we'll actually be heading to Blood Moon and grabbing something absolutely insane that we showed recently here on the channel. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead, grab my Divine Intervention spell, pop it, and we'll catch up in just a moment. Now once we're back in Sadrith Mora, we are going to want to pop back into the Mages Guild, and the best way to get over to Blood Moon is going to be talking to Eniel. We're going to want to travel to Aldrun, and then once we are in Aldrun, we are going to want to take the Silt Strider from here over to Cool. Now once we are in Cool, we are going to want to head down to the docks. And once we are on the docks, we're gonna wanna talk to the old Khajiit Severe over here and have him take us over to Blood Moon so we can get our final absurdly powerful item and then show you what all of this has been building towards. I promise it's worth it. Ah, uh, another beautiful day out here in Fort Frostma. The wind is blowing, the sun is shining, and the dead uh, walk the earth because, you know, I, I don't know, the Draugrs, they, they don't want to stay in their graves. They're, they're freaking dead Nords. They're too rambunctious, all right? You can't, you can't keep a good Nord down. You can't even keep him clothed. So why, how did you expect him to stay dead? All right, that's all I'm saying. But once we are here in Blood Moon, outside of Fort Frostmoth, we're going to want to open the map and follow the river just north to this area here, which is right outside Skull Village. Now, if you're an avid watcher of the channel, you probably know what we're going after here, which is going to be one of the more recent items that we showcased. But, huh? you what? Who is who is that man posing so menacingly? What the hell? Why aren't you attacking us? What? I, I have never seen an enemy do that before. That is, that is absurdly frightening. Okay, we're leaving. We're leaving, hold on. Let me ready Scorch. Okay, uh, well, this is, the, this is the dangers of traveling in Blood Moon. Well, I guess, Guess we're gonna get to test the build early here. Are, are you just, is he? <laughs> he's just taunting us. 
taunting us naked from a rock. See, this is what I mean. You can't keep a Nord down. I'm sitting here fully armored, got this insane face on me, and he's he's butt naked, just ready to fight. God, I love Nords. But uh, okay, uh, we're just gonna continue to ignore him, and and maybe we're good. I, d I don't know. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and chalk that one up to the Morrowind magic we all know and love. I, like you, am not immune to it. So here we are. We have just been following the river up, like I mentioned. Let's take a look at the map here. Again, just keep that sucker on your left, and you're going to have a good time because the cave that we want is actually right there in front of us, hiding behind the Reiklings. But remember how we grab those invisibility potions from Devaith? Well... This is going to be the perfect time to use them. So here we go. Grab the invisibility potion. And just like that, the murder smurfs can no longer see us. <laughs> and now that we're out here, we are going to want to pop right into Rim Hull. Oh, and now that we're in here, summon our Draymora. We need them to do the heavy lifting here. Oh, God. Oh, God. We're going to have to absorb health. Come on. There we go. We're back. Okay, these guys do a ton of damage in the early game. Oh, oh no, no, oh no. <laughs> okay, okay, stay calm, stay calm. We can do this, we can do this. All right, take two, Scourge. Come on, stay focused on the Draymora and we're good and we're set. Let's go here with Absorb Health. There we go, okay, back topped up. Okay, okay, one down. That's right, Blood Moon content, level one. Level one, we're doing it, we're doing it. Let's get our summons back out. Let's make sure we stay topped up. Ooh, there's doing damage, doing damage. Yes. One more left. One more. Oh, come on, buddy. We need we need you to do some work. Oh, he died. He died. Oh, we we need Scourge back. Okay, he's also a skeleton, so he's gonna be weak to flame. Let's try and get the flame atronach down. See if we can. There we go. Oh, we have him now. We've got him now. Easy money. Get him, boys. <laughs> and just like that. Okay. The power of conjuration. Look at that. Blood Moon content already getting completed here, even though we would have died in two hits. But that's why builds matter, people. So with the henchmen out of the way, let's go ahead and talk to Timval. And you can see right here the item that we actually came all the way to Solstheim for. And that is going to be the Mantle of Woe. Now, I have a full video on just this item already on the channel. Be sure to click that card up there if you want some more information on this. We're going to give you the short version. I'm going to open Timball here, click on the Mantle of Woe, and then we are going to tell him literally anything here because he is mad and is going to kill us anyways unless you do the trick that I told you in that other video on the channel. So I'm going to click one of these. Like I said, doesn't really matter. He is going to attack us, and let's go ahead and get right back to it. We need to be very careful. He has some strong spells. We're gonna want our buddies to handle this entire fight, like I mentioned, because he is not someone that we should be messing with. Oh, come on, please cast, please cast. Oh, I think he's already out of Magicka. Okay, all right, uh, beat him, Be <laughs> beat him, men. <laughs> How's this for necromancy, you freaking pansy? Oh, oh, shit, uh, no one saw that. <laughs> But here we go. We've got him on the ropes. Just one more hit. Come on, boys. Yes. <laughs> and that's as we're on the ground. Well, Tim Vall is no more. And with his demise comes our ascension to something that should never have been made. Let us open his inventory. And here you will see the mantle of woe. Value 1,000 with a drain attribute. Personality 100 points. A weakness to normal weapons, 20 points. And the reason we are here, a Fortify Maximum Magicka, five times intelligence and Fortify Skill Conjuration by 50 points. And, well, a Sun Damage for 20 points, but that's not so important. All you have to do, you know, just keep out of the sun when you're wearing this sucker. But when you get in a tight spot and you need to perform, put on the Mantle of Woe and your summons will become much, much easier, and your Magicka pool will be boosted into the stratosphere. Again, we've already taken the Atronach, and we are a Breton, so we have a massive Magicka pool to begin with. This is just going to make it insane. So here we are. Okay, we have 
the mad battle mage now. We have an incredibly tanky wizard who has their conjuration boosted up to 95 at level 1. We have a magical pool of 510. We have a full set of steel armor and an incredible repeatable Draymora summon at our fingertips. So you know how how-to videos go. What are we going to do with it? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to do with it. We're going to go to tribunal and we're going to face exactly who you think we are. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the City of Light, City of Magic, the illustrious, incredible, totally awesome Mornhold. Well, totally awesome above the ground. <laughs> the reviews are probably a little bit mixed about the sewers here in this particular DLC, but we're not going to go down there because I'm sure if you have, you know, begun to insinuate who we could possibly be fighting in Mournhold to showcase a build's power, well, there's only one answer, and he lies just beyond this door here in the temple courtyard. Now, before we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with our foe here in Tribunal, I have done a couple extra things off-camera just to save some time, so let's quickly go over what that is. First, I stopped in Balmora on the way here and grabbed some exclusive restore health and exclusive restore magical potions, as well as refilled our standard potions of willpower and magicka at some remaining mages guilds. You can also look over here at our spells and you can see I just expanded what we already had of Greater Bonewalker 1, 2, 3, 2, 4, and 5 as well. And this is going to be critical for the strat that we'll be using against our little friend. But outside of that, everything else exactly the same as it was earlier in the video. So without further ado, Guard, I hope you, uh, you know, turn a blind eye here uh, because we have a date with destiny and death will be involved. Now, one thing you will notice is that it is nighttime when we are doing this fight and that is completely on purpose because I want to be able to use the mantle of woe when we do this particular engagement with, oh God, the Lord of Misery himself right over there, Gaynor. Because I certainly don't need the additional sun damage burn off the Mantle of Woe on top of everything that Gaynor's about to dish out. But let's go ahead, really talk to our problematic to little Bosmer here, and go ahead and queue up our fight. So he's going to ask for a small favor, and as is tradition, we are going to click through everything, everything, and he is going to be pissed and run away. Now, we do need to go wait, uh, in case you haven't, fought Gaynor before. We do need to leave that particular cell and then go and wait for a couple days just so that uh, he actually comes back in his armor in proper form. So I will do that right here. And now after three days of waiting, a bit of Magicka restoration from our shrine here and getting our health topped off, well, we're going to hop back into the courtyard and cue this fight up. So here we go. We're going to head right back into the temple courtyard. And you can see there he is standing menacingly and let's start the fight and see how this is going to go all right here we go gaynor well well look who it is my dear friend panikin just my luck that you should stumble in here indeed it seems my good fortune knows no bounds despite my mistreatment at your hands i found riches been able to influence just about anyone i talk to and can you believe i've never lost a fight never even gotten a scratch Somehow, I don't think I'll have a problem continuing that streak, and I owe you. Well, that is where you are wrong, Gaynor, because we have built the baddest battle mage this side of Tamriel, and my friend, we will show you that right now. So let's hit goodbye. We start immediately. He did sneak a hit in. What we're doing here is summoning all of our bone walkers. He is going to make very quick work of them until they start getting some of the damage strength down. But as you can see here, this is our strat against Gaynor. We basically just want to keep using our massive magical pool from the Mantle of Woe. Let's go ahead and get Scourge out as well for our Dremoras. Now the thing with Gaynor is he does have a very high reflect but it actually does vary. It's between 50 and 100 depending on the day so let's just keep throwing the bone walkers at him come on look at this mantle of woe magicka pool we still haven't popped one magicka potion <laughs> the, man the mantle is absurd okay we've got him in a corner this is actually not great for us because we can't get any attacks in on him all right we need to grab a restore magicka 
All right, Matchka is ticking back up. He's still doing a ton of damage, just mowing through our Bone Walkers. Okay, okay, I think we're starting to damage him. He's, he's, the Bone Walkers are lasting a little bit longer. Hopefully we're finally cutting through that strength. God, we've hurt him a lot. He's not dealing nearly as much damage as he was, but it's still impressive, still impressive. Some of these are getting through. He just has so much reflect. Oh, oh, we're about dead. Go, go, let me through. <laughs> Come on, Bone Walkers, you're killing me. Oh my God, we must, have, we have to be, we have to have thrown a hundred Bone Walkers at this guy by now. I mean, this is ridiculous. Oh, he's dealing no damage anymore though. All right, we are all out of potions. We do have him pretty close though. All right, we're, we're starting to tick through. I don't think he's moving. I actually haven't seen him move in a little while. Come on, game. Come on, game. Even if we can't actually kill him because he has he has a constant regen health, I, I think we can consider it a victory. Okay, if we if we can nullify Gaynor, I will, I will consider this a victory at level one. Oh, they are living way longer. He is, he is hurting. We have broken through the barrier. Gaynor is now wet noodling our freaking bone walkers. They're actually timing out now. He's not even killing them. The mantle of woe magic pool has won out over the great ebony warrior Gaynor. Oh yeah, this is his, he can't even kill the greater bone walkers anymore. Look at this, he's, he's sitting there, he's mano a mano. They're all timing out. Oh my God, the magic pool of the mantle of woe. 10 standard restores and four exclusives beats Gaynor. <laughs> oh, and don't forget 500 bone walkers. I, I should have been counting how many summons we had. It, it, it was, I mean, easily, easily in the hundreds at this point. Is he still doing damage? I think he is still doing damage. Because my point is if we can get him to where he does zero melee damage, I mean, then it's only a matter of time. The, the tech is proofed at that point. I love how this was supposed, this was supposed to be a high octane fight. You know, he's sitting over here, thought we were gonna run around the temple. No, nope. he is going to be uh, bum rushed in the corner by a whole bunch of freaking zombies. That's probably not what he thought when he, when he came back trying to get his money. Well, we actually can't even spend any more magicka. We can't use any spells anymore. We're out of potions. And uh, there he is, he's frozen. <laughs> Thwarted by a level one mage. How about that? That'll show you to mess with a conjurer in the future. Okay, if they're followed around by a zombie, you probably don't want to mess with them. Now, before we, I guess, consider this a moral victory, let's see, is he still doing any damage? All right, let's step up. We're at half health. If he doesn't kill us in one shot, I consider this a victory. I consider it a victory. Let's see what happens. Oh, yep. Look at that damage. Gaynor the highway bandit. Look at this. We have... <laughs> We have reduced him to our level. <laughs> we have nullified Gaynor's threat. Now, could we kill him if we wanted to sit here forever and do it? Yes, but I think this proves the point of the build, how ridiculously powerful it is, having some incredibly large magic pools, having an insanely high conjuration, and ladies and gentlemen, doing this all at level one. So, although he is not dead, I'm gonna consider this a moral victory, okay? We broke out some cool Marwin tech. We showed what the build is capable of, and if it can nullify Gaynor, it can nullify just about everybody. I think we just leave him here, right? Now, now he, he's just part of the decoration. Wait, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he stays cursed forever. I, let, let's go inside. Let's go inside and wait. Let's see what happens if we wait a couple days in a different cell. Okay, so let's wait for uh, 13 hours. Okay, and then let's wait for a day. And then we'll see if he resets. I don't I don't believe he does. I don't believe he does. But we could just keep farming the restore attribute right there and not even have to buy more potions to continue the fight. And uh, there he is. <laughs> 37 hours later. Oh, this poor sap. He's cursed. <laughs> Well, ladies and gentlemen, I, I think you get the point of the video, how strong this build is. We're going to keep abusing Gaynor here. Just remind him of who the freaking boss is. And, well, like I said, you could take this tech and pretty much bring it to anybody in the entire game who doesn't have a guaranteed 100% reflect. But as you can see, Morrowind's biggest threat is no longer quite that big of a threat after a couple minutes alone with this battle mage character ladies and gentlemen i hope you enjoyed this one i know this is one that people have requested for a long time thank you so much for watching and as always i will catch you on the next one